I want a car. Chicks dig the car. This is why Superman works alone. Wow. For the first time, I have almost no idea where to begin. Um, okay. Firstly, although I've been quite nerdy for most of my 30 years of life, I've never been a comic nerd. I mean, as a result, my knowledge of Superman comes from Superman's 2 and 3, uh, the Lois and Clark New Adventures of Superman TV series, um, Superman Returns, and, I guess, Supergirl. Secondly, I th I think my bullshit acceptance tank is starting to overflow. I have pointed out, usually when I'm about to praise a film that's being universally crapped on, that I have low standards, and that's basically true. I mean, my Transformers Dark of the Moon review is basically a combination of low standards and an extreme weakness for giant transforming robots. Now, I can fully accept that neither the second or third live-action Transformers films were actually that good, but it doesn't alter the fact that I did enjoy watching them. And thirdly, some of my biggest problems with this film are far, far too spoilerific to mention here. Maybe elsewhere? Much like with Star Trek Into Darkness, this film is a visual spectacle. Yeah, I know, that's quite the no-really statement, given that this is a summer blockbuster, but it doesn't alter the fact that this is a visual spectacle. The scenes on Krypton in particular were some of the most visually interesting moments of the film. Uh, in addition, the costume design and general aesthetics of Krypton are also quite cool. Although I do have to say, is there a reason why all these otherwise iconic costumes have to have all this detail? The film does have a decent pace to it. I mean, even when certain things started to bug me a little, it still rattled along nicely and I barely felt the two and a half hour running time. The soundtrack is also pretty epic, with the main theme in particular put me in mind of some very awesome Two Steps From Hell. <sighs> yeah, you can probably tell that I'm grasping at straws really when I decide to compliment the musical score. The problem, ultimately, is with the second half of this film. The first half is very well put together. It has the occasional touch of humour, and it has some genuine emotion to it. But for me, it's all downhill as soon as kal gets his super suit and it goes downhill due to a few very specific things that are too spoilerific to mention here. Suffice it to say though, there were a few too many lapses in internal logic that really annoyed me. Also, when Kal-El and Zod start laying the smack down on each other, ugh, smeg me, I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but it got real old real fast. CGI fisticuff, CGI destruction, CGI, CGI, CGI. Not helped, I might add, when you can spot where the CG ends and the live action begins in any given sequence. Oh, and not to mention all that fucking shaky cam. <laughs> but you know what? I could have gotten over that if the acting and the dialogue were great. But... Eh. The best performance by a country mile in this film comes from Kevin Costner. I mean, for me, he stole just about every scene he was in just by being good. In joint second place, we have Lawrence Fishburne as Perry White and Amy Adams as Lois Lane. Diane Lane wasn't too bad as Martha Kent, but for everyone else... I mean, whilst Henry Cavill does look the part, his overall delivery as Clark or Superman or whoever you want to call him, it stinks. I mean, the kids playing young Clark did a more interesting job with the character, quite honestly, and as for Zod... Ugh, Again, he looks the part, but as soon as he opens his gob, bleh. I mean, the same goes for Zod's merry band of miscreants, for that matter. I mean, as for the dialogue, I mean, there are a few good lines dotted throughout, and the final two lines of the film are actually quite clever, but far too many things are overstated. I mean, not so much by repetition but more in the sense of being cracked on the head with the line of dialogue and being told, See! Look! It's all profound! I mean, the fact that the delivery of a lot of these lines is shit doesn't help matters either. A friend of mine, by his own admission, doesn't get superhero films. He quite enjoyed Nolan's Batman trilogy, but I think that was likely because there was a degree of realism to it. Now, I went into the cinema hoping that this would be one to show him, one not so much to convert him as to make him say, 
I still don't get superheroes, but that was pretty cool. Instead, this feels like a film which would actually lessen his opinion of superhero movies. Hell, I like to think that I get superhero films, but parts of Man of Steel made me wonder why. I mean, at least Green Lantern had the good grace to be a bit crap from the get-go. This, I mean, all the potential is there for a great film, superhero or otherwise. But, despite a climax that, in fairness, I honestly wasn't expecting and it was all the better for it, what we have here is a film that starts really well, goes downhill when it becomes a Superman movie, and ends with CG-heavy action that left me cold because it lacked imagination. It's not that Man of Steel is bad, I mean, hell, I gave a largely positive review to Dark of the Moon. It's not so much that some of the more questionable aspects of the plot annoyed me, hell, I would have given a mostly positive review to Revenge of the Fallen. It's that I expected so much more from this than bad acting, clunky exposition, and action that quickly got boring. Maybe you need to be a proper Superman fan to get this, or to enjoy this. But for the second time this blockbuster season, I've seen a film that I have no desire to watch again.